let's move on to another public policy issue, one that's uh, being debated in Washington right now. Uh, tax the rich is a very popular sentiment. It's also now a fashion statement, I guess, which we've, which we've all seen. Um, so when President Biden looks into the microphone and says, pay your fair share, what does that mean? It means that if you're one of the 55 corporations that literally paid absolutely nothing in federal income taxes uh, in 2020, uh, and in fact received $3.5 billion in tax refunds or rebates, um, or tax refunds, I should say, uh, maybe you should uh, pay your fair share. But here's the thing, if the tax code is written in a way where corporations can legally take advantage of loopholes and incredibly low effective corporate tax rates, they're going to do it, right? So it's one thing to say pay your fair share. It's another thing to actually write uh, a tax code that is uh, a little more equitable and ensures that everyone is, in fact, paying their fair share. Ben, what's pay your fair share mean? I'm so there we had it from the progressive left. Anna basically saying, hey, corporations. And you know what? I'm all for that. Corporations, everybody, again, whatever is written in the law, if there are loopholes that are existing, I hate the word loopholes, but if the laws are written in such, everybody takes advantage of those. Whatever the laws are written in the tax code, whether they're corporations, and it's all relative, right? If you can take millions of dollars of tax incentives and get tax refunds and you have the ability to do that, hey, more power to you. If you're an individual, you know, you're working or you've got a small business, you're going to find a tax attorney, you're going to find a CPA and you're going to ask him to say, what? Find every single deduction that I can get that's commensurate with my income and what I've done and find the legal avenue so I have to pay the least amount of taxes. That's the way it is. You want to change it? Go through Congress, go through your representatives, you know, adv advocate for your, you know, whatever it is, okay, that you're trying to do in terms of have everybody pay more. But the fact of the matter is America has one of, at least well, and President Trump, one of the least uh, corporate tax rates, and it was good to do business when President Trump was in office, other than it is okay for President um, during Joe Biden's tenure. Let's see what um, Ben has to say. I mean, the, the obvious answer would be a flat tax, but the, the, the longer answer is that the United States has one of the most progressive income tax systems on planet Earth. Uh, most of the systems in, for example, Northern Europe are far less progressive. The, the top tax rate kicks in a lot lower on the income scale because you have to pay for the large scale social services. Uh, the, the people who are at the top of the income bracket in the United States, the top quintile essentially pays all net taxes in the United States. Not some, not most, all. And the reason for that is because there are tax transfers and the transfer of payments that are inherent in public services do not accrue to the people at the top of the tax bracket. They accrue to everybody else who is, who is receiving that sort of funding. When we talk about you know, higher taxes on corporations, we do not have one of the world's lowest corporate tax rates. We are somewhere in the middle in, in look at the OECD countries. We are, we are certainly not the lowest on the totem pole in terms of our corporate tax rate. In fact, you know, right-wing sources like the Heritage Foundation will say that it is much friendlier to do business in places like Denmark or Sweden in many cases than it is to do business in the United States. Tax rate's pretty high in Denmark and Sweden. It, it is, the personal income tax tax rate is very high in Denmark and Sweden. The corporate tax rate is basically near or on par with that of the United States. If we were to raise our corporate tax rate the way that, that President Biden is talking about, we'd actually have a higher corporate tax rate than China currently does. Uh, the, the, the notion that corporations ought to be paying tax at all, in my view, is mistaken, given the fact that the income is immediately either reinvested in the company or passed on to people who immediately pay all of that tax. By the time, the, by the time you actually receive your income in this country, the, the income's been taxed about seven different ways. Right? You're getting taxed through the corporation, then it's passed on to you as salary, which is taxed. If you invest it in the stock, market and then you sell your stock, that is taxed as capital gains tax. When you die, the government taxes that as well. So how many times can you tax the same dollar before people begin to disinvest? Okay, right there. Check and mate, folks. That was check and mate to Anna, Cas uh, to, to Anna basically. I mean, she just came out and said, oh, the typical thing, corporations don't pay their fair share, blah, 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 blah. And Ben basically wrote down, okay, so that's 55 corporations that didn't pay their fair share, in your opinion. What about the millions and millions and millions of Americans who are getting taxed 
left and right, up and down. You know, I mean, rectally, you were getting taxed every, how many times can you tax that same dollar in your wages, in capital gains, uh, through other investments, short-term, long-term, debt tax, uh, you know, your state tax, Social Security tax, Medicare, I mean, all these taxes. How many times can that same damn dollar be taxed? So Ben, right out of the gate, comes out and absolutely obliterates, obliterates Anna's. And when Anna said, oh, she just basically came out and said, oh, those tax rates are pretty high, you know, in the other, uh, you know, in the other countries or whatever, or, or low in the countries, I mean, it's just a matter of fact of saying, and Ben came back and said, what? The corporate rates in those countries are low or on par with the United States corporate rates, but the effective tax rates for the citizens are much higher. Is that what we want to live in? And then the other thing, too, is that we have 330 million people living in the United States of America versus what? 15, 20, 30, 40 million living in another country, which is basically, you know, homogenous. It's not a diversified, you know, group of various ethnicities, mostly European and white. So in terms of health care benefits, in terms of uh, medical benefits, in terms of any other thing that the tax incentives are giving back to those people, it's going back to literally the same type of, you know, in terms of, you know, groupings of people. You don't have to worry about the diversity. You don't have to worry about immigration. That's another thing. Immigration. People are coming to these countries to Europe, to the United States, for what? Because they know once they come here, they can clamp on and latch on to those benefits without paying into the system and getting them almost immediately. Is that what we want to do? Anyways, let's continue with this. Uh, Let me... Um even Anna knows that she was smoked on that. Even Anna knows she got smoked on that question. That's why she's smiling over here and she's thinking to herself, damn, I just got absolutely roasted. I'd like to respond to that, though. Okay, of go course, ahead. Of course, of course he wants to respond. To argue that the uh, corporate tax rates in the United States are too high or that, you know, I mean, first off, let me just touch on the comparison you gave regarding uh, tax, progressive taxes uh, in European countries versus the United States. I mean, yes, the taxes might be higher in those European countries, but what do... She just agreed, said yes, they might be higher, but... Or yeah, you're absolutely right, but it's always a B-U-T. People living in those countries get in return. They get incredible childcare. I mean, listen, uh, the average American family, two income household, spends a whopping 22% of their household income on childcare alone, right? So when you're talking about European countries that offer quality childcare, that by the way, that opens up the opportunity for people to go to work, something that we should maybe think about as we're dealing with this labor shortage. 64,000 women left the job force in April alone, not because they want to, but because they can't afford childcare. Everything in this country- That's not one of the reasons why they left. They left because the way that the uh, Biden administration, when they put that package uh, together after COVID, and I know, Tons of people, tons of people in our community, in the neighborhood, people that you talk to saying, hey, they're paying me more to stay at home than they are for me to go to work. Why would I be a moron and idiot to go to work and get less? And right, doesn't even make any sense. So Anna's completely wrong on that. I mean, there might be some, maybe 10% or 50, you know, a small part of that population for some reason isn't going back to work. But don't say it's because they're having children or because they need to have a uh, child care put forth. And there's a lot of companies out there that are providing for child care, uh, either through um, incentives, um, through paying for partial uh, amounts of child care or having child care centers in their place of business as well is privatized. Everything has a for-profit model. And there's consequences that come along with that, including for the business community that might want, you know, a more robust social safety net uh, program, social safety net to ensure that people 
feel comfortable enough to go to work, uh, but we don't have that here. So yes, people might pay more in taxes, including those lower on the income scale, but what they get in return is far greater than what people in this country have been getting. The United States has spent, since the beginning of the war on poverty, some $22 trillion in the war on poverty. We spend an awful lot on social services in this country on a per capita level. In fact, it is very much on par with what the European countries spend. It's just not spent particularly well. Uh, when it comes to things like child care, uh, a very young Elizabeth Warren, before she became Senator Elizabeth Warren, specifically wrote about universal child care, and she said that it actually was contributing to what she called the two-income track in a, in a book that she wrote in the early 2000s. And what she talked about is the fact that there are a lot of women who, for example, may not want to work, and what you're actually doing is incentivizing people to have to go to work because you are now providing child care as opposed to providing a competitive advantage to, for example, families where one parent is working. Uh, I agree with you, by the way, that you know, child care is a very difficult issue. I also agree that this is why we used to have, for example, family structures that were conducive to allowing people to help out. We had, we, there, there are many businesses that do provide for some form of child care. We certainly have many businesses that provide for some form of maternity or paternity leave. It, the, the European countries, which obviously have been used as a model by by a lot of folks on the left. Between 1970 and 1993, they experienced exorbitantly low rates of growth. And the reason for that was because they radically overburdened their social safety net systems. It created enormous social problems. It created enormous immigration problems. They had to scale a lot of those back. And why, your, but why, why would it create immigration problems? It created immigration problems because a lot of people were coming specifically for the benefits. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, that, that would be, that would be to yeah. my point, which is it creates more yeah. problems. She just went, yeah, as if that's a great thing to do, to have immigration basically based on, hey, we got freebies and benefits to give for you. We're not, we, we don't care about our own citizens, but you know what? They paid into the system all along, but hey, all you in the rest of the world, yeah, come on over. There's freebies and goodies out here that the people that are working are going to pay for, not only for the people that are, for the social, um, for the social safety net, for people who don't have anything or don't have as much. But you know what? Now we're going to pay for what? Illegals and um, foreigners that are coming over predominantly to do what? Just basically go for the benefits. And that's pretty much it. And she's just, <laughs> yeah, she's shaking her head and smiling. Absolutely, of course. That's how we're going to build a society, by getting immigration to come over to give freebies and benefits and money to immigrants for not doing any work. Unbelievable. Problems very often that it's I okay mean, with. but I mean, it, sure, I guess that's a. Yes, if your, I put a free donut view, sign in my shop. Zizi goes, sure, but, yeah, but the big B U T T comes out. People will come for the. No, day. but if you have, if you have a robust. If you have a society that actually takes care of its workers, right? If you have a society that makes your life a lot. Oh my God, here we go back and forth again. If you have a society that takes care of its workers, workers are being paid. You, when you enter into a contract with your employer, the employer has said that this is the, uh, what he's going to pay you, either in a salary or hourly. And you have agreed to that. If you don't agree to it, you find some place that's going to give you, uh, you know, a much higher salary much better benefits, and you shop your experience, your expertise, your education, your level of excellence, whatever that is, in whatever business model or employment model that you can offer to your employer so that he can make a profit and in turn pay you a wage that he feels he can do and work at a profit. And it's your job to negotiate or your job to get the skills and the education and the experience to work up that ladder. And millions and millions of people do that. The problem is here in the United States, leftists, socialists, Marxists, are putting into the minds of people that, hey, you don't need to do all that. All right? The CEOs, but they're making all the money at the top and they're not giving anything back to the people at the bottom. And you know what? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to you know, um, educate yourself even more. You don't have to get more experience. You don't have to do any of the things to move up the ladder the right and the traditional way. No, you know what? Just stay where you're at right now, but demand everything for you. Demand higher wages. Demand higher, more benefits. Demand everything, but give nothing back in return. That's what people like Anna and the progressives and the socialists and the Marxists and the others, that's what they're basically trying to say. That's their, that's, that really 
is what they want to, you know, put out there as, I guess, the workforce policy. Would get some type of social assistance if they can cross the borders legally or illegally, come over to the United States and basically, you know, mooch off the system and get the benefits without having put having the years of putting into the system, grab those benefits immediately. That's what's happening. Anyways, round six, definitely this one, okay. I would say uh, if this was a, um, you know, a, a 10 round fight, you'd probably have to give nine rounds, um, you know, to Ben in terms of this one here in part six. So, we appreciate you taking the time. Let us know in your comments below. Do you agree that Ben did better than Anna in this one here in terms of the, uh, you know, taxes and, uh, you know, paying your fair share? Let us know below. Subscribe to the channel. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Nasser. Like, share, and follow us. I said comment below. Hit that notification bell. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.